Hey! Wow, people are already on. I'm live. 25 and 11 likes. Yes! You guys and girls rock with a capital R. I'm, give me a second, I'm going to open up my YouTube channel on my laptop, which is what my phone is leaning on. So, ask me anything. All right, all right, Joris. Yeah, I'll ask you anything. How tall are you? Hello. So fantastic. Okay, so, wow, Nepal. How beautiful is that? So, oh, got to sign in here. Give me one second while I get myself together. You know, how does everybody survive with passwords? What's your process? You know, it's it, to me, it's like, it is continually, I'm changing passwords like every other day. Vancouver. Um, and wow, big fan. Thank you in merry old England. Love to see that. Hello there, sir. Yes, James. DJ. Wow. Dashler. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, give me a second, I'm going to open up the chat window. So I, yay, there you go. How long have I been producing, Benjamin? That's a fantastic question. Um, ever since the 90s, because I always had like home studios and things like that. So, oh, you're in LA. Hey, Sonny, where in LA are you? Glasgow, beautiful. Poland, my wife is from Poland. Austria, we love Austria. Vermont, Brazil, Hawaii, the Ukraine, more Brazil, more Berlin. Wow, amazing. Radix Music, hello. Oh, this is fantastic. Estonia, Jamaica, California, Portugal, uh, North Carolina, more Brazil, Basingstoke, Sarah, yay, how have you been? I know Basingstoke well. I was, uh, went to Basingstoke Technical College, um, Hungary, Nashville, um, Copenhagen, uh, Sweden, Holland, Colombia, Detroit, Switzerland, more big hugs in the UK, least favorite band to work with, my own band. There's nothing worse than working with your own band. That was the least favorite band because you just end up fighting and you can't separate yourself from being a producer. Um, now, when I was doing uh, Star 69, it was a lot easier, but sometimes you own bands. Uh, oh, you went to the Basingstoke College of Technology. It was, I think it was just called Basingstoke Tech. Maybe it was Basingstoke College of Technology in those days. Um, Horsham, West Sussex, we love Horsham. Uh, ah, Finland, beautiful. The Faroe Islands. Uh, hey, Tim Stuttgart, Pakistan. Hello there in Pakistan. Arizona, more Pakistan. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to try and get some questions because more um, I, I could uh, I can end up continually saying hello because there's so many wonderful people. Please um, uh, like and share. I'm going to grab a guitar because I feel like if I don't have a guitar in my hands, and it's probably a good talking point, I feel like if I don't have a guitar in my hands and I'm not really doing music, <laughs> that's probably my issue, but you know what? This, is, this has been bugging me for months. I've been, I've been trying to take these off. Take these off. Look at this, now you can put your hand in and get a pick out. Yay! All right, so. <laughs> All righty. Now I feel better. Now I feel like I'm doing music. I've got a guitar. Let's tip this down a little bit. Hey, everybody. An out of tune guitar, but a, tune, a guitar. When you mix, do you ever think about the mastering process, such as if something is quite compressed already, do you worry the mastering process will ruin the sound? I mean, yes, but it's sort of the same thing, isn't it? I want the, um, um, I really want this to be um, the best it possibly can be. So when I'm mixing, um, I just want the mix to be amazing. If it sounds too compressed, then it's too compressed. Um, these days, you're going to find that most mastering guys are limiting. They are limiting stuff. Um, they're doing less and less compression. They're only doing compression when the mix isn't compressed properly in the first place. Um, so I don't really think about it like what would the mastering engineer do as much as like, is my mix sounding great? If it sounds too compressed already, then uh, I'm doing something wrong. I just went to Norm's Rare Guitars and did a video with Tim Pierce 
of us jamming. It's going to be amazing. Okay, please tell me how to remove bass from vocals. My voice, bass, fights with instrumental bass, please help. I mean, honestly, it depends on your sound of your voice. I mean, if it's super lows that are in your voice, you don't want to necessarily wipe those out. But you could quite safely high pass at about 150 on most, not all vocals, on most vocals. Some pop vocals are up to 300 high passed. I know we have this joke all the time, how there's a big misinformation video and videos out there talking about don't high pass. You do need to high pass because you need to create low ending clarity. You know, so ov obviously be very, very mindful of that because low frequencies are huge waveforms. If you've got too much low end in your mix, you don't get more bass, you get less and you get mud and confusion. And every mastering engineer is telling me there's been an increase in badly mixed mixes with that haven't been high passed properly because of this misinformation. So be very, very careful of that. But 150 and a gentle slope, like a 6dB slope, is gonna be absolutely fine for high, for high passing on a vocal. Now, as I can say, in some pop vocals, they go up to 2, 250, 300 even sometimes. But it depends on the singer. You don't want to be wiping off low end of a vocal down there if that's what you want. So just be good. Hello in Brighton. Beautiful. Um, okay. Am I a fan of The Cure? Who isn't? They're amazing. Um, I love great songs, and they have tons. When, uh, when you did, when you were learning to mix and learned something to mix, you didn't like, weren't you? but weren't sure what it was exactly. I'm not quite sure what you mean. I mean, it's, it takes time. If you're talking about that process, then it does take time to, to, to hear things and appreciate when something's good. All I can say is take lots of breaks and listen in different environments, especially the car test. I know recently, Somebody who I like was saying, don't do the car test. Well, that's absolute baloney. Some of the best mixers in the world still do the car test. I think this is a problem sometimes with people with information that aren't necessarily working every day. They get fixed ideas, but I'm telling you, we did car tests with Neil Avron. And look up Neil Avron's mixing, you know, 21 Pilots. That record sounds amazing, and it was mixed entirely in the, in the box. And we did a car test when we were doing the Aerosmith record with him. So, People do car tests. Great mixers do car tests. People that want to write blogs to confuse you say things like that, but don't. If you've got a car, they're designed for low end. Every car, you've been in a car these days, it's it's crazy. Tons and tons of low end. So it's a great place to check whether your kick and bass relationship is good. Hey, everybody, would you please like and share? It would be absolutely amazing if you could like and share. Thank you, Toya. I, I, I'm... Yeah, tips on kick and bass balance, please. Okay, so bass, guitar, and kick. Kick's fundamental low end is somewhere between 40 and 70. Um, when, I've been, when I've worked with Chris Orlaugy, he actually boosts on his Poltex on his mix at 70. He has one of those Poltex that boosts at 70. I personally boost at 60. Both works. He boosts at 70. But you're going to feel the low end of the kick between 40 and 70 is where you're going to really feel that thump. Now, there's crossover areas on bass guitar. And the three frequent areas that we see are 80, where the kick and the bass are uh, over each other, and about 100 and, 100 and 110. Those three areas can really, really, you know, um, mess up your low end on your kick and your bass. So what I would do, you know, is what I would do is like when you've got your kick sub, like go to 80 and pull a little bit of that out on your kick sub and then go to 100 and like 110 and pull a little bit of that out. You know what I mean? That is that is what um, that is what I would do. You know, definitely go and do that. Um, you know, so. Go. 80, 1, 100, and 110. And you could pull a couple of dB out at 80, and a couple, like one half, two dB at 100, and a couple at 110. And you'll open up the low end on your bass. Suddenly your bass is starting to, to breathe. Um, then what I would do is I would go at about 50 or 60 on the bass and gently, gently high pass. Gently high pass. And then you'll get a great relationship between the kick and the bass guitar. Um, Blah, 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 blah. What do you think about the TM-102? It's a great mic. 
Um, do you find it necessary to sidechain? I only sidechain the kick and the bass when I'm trying to create a specific effect. Um, it's difficult because unless, when you're in, hello there in Russia, um, it's difficult because if you're, if you're doing EDM or really heavily gridded music, like metal that's been cut to pieces, that will work. Why will it work? Well, it will work because the kick and the bass will be like this, locked. Here's the kick, here's the bass guitar, and they're like locked. So you can do a side chaining trick. You can totally do a side chaining trick because every time that kick plays, it will just dip, you know, the, it will dip the front end of the bass guitar. However, if it's sloppy and just like a good rock and roll band, like an Aerosmith, you know, Zeppelin meets kind of Stonesy, kind of sloppy rock and roll band, that won't work because the kicks and the basses will be pushing and pulling each other and you'll get like a weird kind of random pumping. Side chaining works really, really well in EDM and really well in heavily modern rock edited music because things move exactly in time with each other. But if you've got things that are a little sloppy, it will work, don't get me wrong, it will work, but it won't feel as good. And you might feel like a kick is like sucking out the middle of a bass note if it's, you know what I mean? You have to be mindful of what your music you're using that stuff to, but I do do it. And I have done it, but usually it's to solve a problem where I've got a huge, huge um, low end on the bass guitar and the kick drum comes in, um, you know, and, and the kick drum comes in and every single time it plays, it ducks out quite massively. Uh, Multiband compression. Um, would you text Kasha and tell her I'm on a live thing? Um, the multiband compression, um, when is it needed? That's a great question, AJ Lazarus. Um, I, this is what's interesting. I can be, you know, I can have some great, great, um, great, great sort of, you know, opinions on this kind of um, stuff. Um, and, you know, I, but I think what is very, very important, what is very, very important is that um, we, you know, we grow and we learn. I personally, I personally, um, I personally don't, don't ever multiband compress a vocal. I've never used it. I found it kind of softened up the vocal. I didn't. And then I interviewed Mark Ender. Did you guys, um, um, did you guys watch that Mark Ender interview? Uh, yeah. I believe Mark Ender is one of the greatest mixers in the world. And um, he's absolutely amazing mixer. And when with the um, the the with his vocal sound on Hey Soul Sister, which I still has a benchmark of being an incredible uh, mixer, I asked him how he did it, and he told me he used multiband compression. So multiband compression works. It works every single time. You know, it's just when you use it, how you use it. I should say it's all about doing those kind of things. Yeah, Mac DSP make great multiband. Waves make a great C4. It's absolutely working. Do I print my sessions? Um, yes, I do. I, I I print effects if they're permanent. I I think it makes a, a great. It's a great great deal. Uh, Waves F6. All right, let's find some more questions. I'm having trouble mixing an acoustic bass drum and an EDM like bass drum with a bass guitar. Uh, losing that low, low every time, not, not getting the bottom end, any advice, thank you. I'd have to hear it, but probably what's happening is that the low is actually very loud, and when it hits your master bus, it just pumps and pushes the whole mix down. That can be one thing. Um, the other stuff is, is that, yes, there's probably too much competing information. Again, that terrible disinformation that's out there about high passing. You've got to, you've probably got a lot of low end going on in other sources. In EDM, you've got to be very, very strategic on how you EQ things. The great things about using virtual instruments and synths and stuff is that you can carve them up. Um, you can take like the low end out of different instruments and then make them fit together. You can have a kick drum, you can have a bass, gu bass guitar or bass synth, you can have all of this stuff and you can get in there and get very creative. You know, so feel free to get really strategic on those kind of things. Um, you know, so have, have, a, have fun with it, but don't be afraid to high pass. Clear some room out on the low end, especially. All right, somebody says, what's my thoughts, especially on EDM? On noise gates. Noise gates are interesting. 
But let's be honest, in DAWs, we can do so much stuff now. We can automate everything. So I don't use gates as much as I used to. We did just use, what did we use on Ace's vocal? What was that effect you used? Okay, so we used a waves noise suppressor effect on, on Ace's vocal. An NS1. An NS1. Um, so there are other things that do it. Ah, uh, thank you, Luca. I'm, 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 and I really appreciate the, uh, the um, positive uh, comment there. Kieran says, more business ready. What's the best way to start out when you can't record at home and can't afford to rent a premises? Any pointers in the right direction would be amazing. I mean, uh, when I started, I, all, all I had was a bedroom and a four track. So it can say hi, hi, Ivan. Um, you know, a bedroom and a four track. Jack White's mixing. Um, Jack White's a great mixer because he, he records and mixes stuff exactly how he wants to hear it. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. I started on a four track cassette and I was in a bedroom and a pair of headphones. So I feel like you kind of make do with whatever situation. The great thing is now is you can do DIs, laptops, amp simulations. You've got everything from amplitude to bias to you name it. There's, there's so many different ways of recording. Can you get Lizzie in? It's more annoying that she's hovering out there than... <laughs> it's, it's easier if we just come in and... <laughs> so, um... So... <laughs> it's like somebody standing at the door and you can see them and you're like... Like, hello, yeah, you come in or... <laughs> God bless it. Um, so um, anyway, uh, bah, 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 bah. so basically with virtual instruments, a pair of headphones and a laptop, that's all you need to get going. That's it. That's all you're gonna get. To. Sean says, hi, Izzy. Um, <laughs> so stop the static mic noise on your, on your mic. Mm, that's interesting. I don't know where you're getting it from. If you're getting like, st well, if you really mean static or if you mean buzzing, I think the NS the NS one was really really good for doing that. Ozone makes some great stuff, you know. Isotope. There's lots of different ones out there. Um, you, you what you probably just want to do is duplicate your track and try different ones until you find one that does it. Sometimes a buzz, like a specific high frequency buzz, um, you just go in there, pinpoint it, and remove it. Um, so, but as far as like starting off, honestly, headphones, virtual instruments, just get making music, and 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 you can do so much these days like that. Um, do all DAWs, are they all the same? No, they have totally different functionality. They seem to prefer different things. Please like and share, by the way. I'd really appreciate it if you liked and share. I don't master with mid-side when I do my thing. Please like and share. Um, I, don't, I don't do that because I personally don't... It confuses me on the phase relationship. Everybody has a different ways of doing it. Not many mastering engineers I do know use uh, mid-side. They only use it when maybe the mix comes in and it's been crushed in a DAW with tons of limiting on it and everything. And they're trying to create some more width because it's so folded in. You know, so that's when mid-side might come in. But I do question, if you're mixing your own stuff, maybe go into your mix and figure out why it's so unbelievably crushed. You know, I think that um, if it sounds like it's folding in, then maybe open it up more, rather than trying to fix the over-compression and the over-limiting before. I would definitely suggest you go into your mix that way. Um, function of a power amp to drive monitors, to drive amplifiers, you know, it's, the, it's what takes a, a preamp signal and amplifies it so we can hear it. Um, when you touch the mic, it disappears. I'm not sure what you mean. Maybe the, you have a cable problem or something like that. If I compress while I'm tracking and I don't need it when I'm mixing, I mean, ultimately that's what the, what's what the classic engineers and producers did, is they recorded things the way they wanted to hear it, you know. Um, that was kind of the, the, the process. They recorded it the way they wanted to hear it. So yes, they did compress on EQ on the way in. I still think that is a great thing. Um, you know, that's still a great thing. Somebody, Alexi says, why Pro Tools, Logic, or Cubase? I do use Logic. At the time, remember the reason, one of the big reasons why Pro Tools became, it is dominant in audio, like recording instruments, is because they were the first to really have proper, ways of editing organic instruments. 
You know, before that, everybody else, there was some great stuff out there. There was all of the, you know, Cubase and everything, but they weren't, they weren't there with audio. They were there with MIDI. So it's one of those kind of situations where they got there first, they developed quickly. They also had a card-based system only for years, you know, before HD, there was Mix Bus and there was, oh, what was the first one? D24, all these different ones, New Bus. These systems were cards that fit inside your computer and the processing was done on the computer. The computers of the time weren't fast enough to carry a lot of DSP. So Pro Tools basically had, you know, they got a jump on everybody. And they, so they were just, they were first and they worked very closely originally with their users. So that's the reason why a lot of like, quote unquote, older guys like Pro Tools. Now, Reaper has got loads of people love it because it's so easy to customize. Logic is great because the virtual um, things. Um, somebody here is saying quickly, phase align um, stuff by hand. Yeah, I do as well. I don't move it, but I use delay compensation. But I think that that's great. Phase aligning kicks and, and bass guitar is wonderful. Um, anyway, so that's why Pro Tools got the jump. Now, Ableton has become massively popular with producers doing dance music and just creativity in general. I was working with, working with Salam Remy uh, with Five Seconds of Summer, and he loved Ableton. So there's a lot of other stuff. You're very welcome, Alexei. Uh, I started, uh, when I get a great sound from my guitar, but Mikey, I can't capture the sound in the same way I hear it. Is the mic, the 57 in the room, how do I capture the sound you hear? Great question, Andrew. Um, really, where are you listening? You're not listening here. You're not putting your ear to the, to the amp. So, you know, if you're not putting your ear to the amp, then basically, um, you know, basically, um, uh, you're listening in a room, then move the mic where you are in the room. If you like the sound of the amp in the room, then mic that area. If you want and you have two mics, then mic close mic and then put a room and then blend the two. But ultimately, you want to pick up the sound that you love and where you hear it. Um, final DB for average mix. You know, how much do I charge for mix or mastering? You have to send me music and have me listen and I'll quote it. I don't do like, there's no one size fits all. If it's an acoustic guitar vocal, it's gonna be a darn side cheaper than like 40, you know, 140 tracks with orchestration that goes on for 11 minutes, you know what I mean? I, I don't do one size fits all and I don't suggest you do that either, unless you can charge so much that it doesn't matter. But I think for most people these days, um, you know, unless it's like, hey David, unless it's guys that, um, how are you, David? Um, hey, Ron, hey, Walker. Um, yeah, unless it's, unless it's somebody who's charging like five to $10,000 for a mix, um, you really aren't in that, if you're not in that world, um, you know, then you should be charging it per based on how long it's going to take you. Uh, my CPU, Philip, is, my computer's pretty old. We're about to upgrade all our systems, so. How do I mix Afro guitars? Um, you know, any guitar should be mixed to fit the song. There is no one size fits all on that one either. Hello there in Toscana in Italy. We will do something with Reaper. Definitely, Jack. We've done stuff with all most DAWs, um, Cubase you've seen. Can you answer questions on live stuff? Yeah, I mean, just ask me questions. Um, okay, I wonder if different DRBs, different interpretation. Yeah, I mean, diff basically each, bonjour, uh, bonjour mon ami, uh, how do you think about Audio Technica microphones, AT2020, I love Audio Technica microphones. You know I love Lewitt, but I'm also a big fan of Audio Technica. There's lots of really good microphones out there that are great. Um, you're very welcome, ya boy. Um, positioning on the mic straight up or upside down for mo vocals. Oh, that's, whatever you want to do, I mean, uh, you know, that, that is, uh, you know, um, an assistant engineer from Ukraine, sure, fly out here, we're always looking for new people, uh, for real. Um, you know, that, that, that whole thing, I mean, every situation I've been, I've always put a mic up like this, but I see people doing it upside down. Um, honestly, I've never heard anybody tell me one sounds better than the other. So y y you tell me, you know, how do you get some cool sound with songs like, um, uh, I don't know that particular plugin, sorry. Uh, your MP3 files seem to clip after converting from waves to MP3. I don't know what algorithm, what are you using to do that? Um, that's probably the problem. Uh, is it possible to replicate sounds like a guitar mix? 
not entirely sure what you mean. Um, sorry. Um, you know, it's any suggestions on recording a warm acoustic guitar tone, windfall as opposed to a bright one? Yeah, mic placement, you know, um, often acoustic guitars, these, these particular marks, these particular strings are quite old, so they're a little duller, but I like them being duller. You know, I like them being duller. But, you know, if you want super bright pop stuff, you know, you're trying to do... Somebody's asking about getting level. If you want super bright pop stuff, just buy brand new strings and change them more often. Apart Remember, most of it comes from the instrument. It's not all about always about fixing it in the mix. If you've got older strings on a duller, warmer sounding guitar, you're going to be closer to the tone you want. Somebody's asking about how to get the level up to, to an industry standard mix. Mix the song and then master separately to thinking about that. If you, you can mix with stuff on your, your master bus, that's absolutely fine. But if you want that super, super, um, yes, I'll do a pop vocal tutorial. Um, I, if you're thinking about doing, you know, making this, you want this to be loud and competitive, then save it for a mastering process. Don't try and fix it in the mixing process. That's one of the, uh, um, you know, somebody here is answering a question about the MP3. Um, the, um, uh, blah, 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 do you like main vocal track to be single tracked or double tracked? Depends on the song. Sometimes I love a single track, sometimes I like a double. Hey, there's 275 people, that's amazing. Would you all like and share, please? I would love it if you could like and share all 275, that would be amazing. And then then YouTube's little algorithm would tell us that this uh, we're live and then we can ask more stuff. So please like and share. Thank you ever so much. What's the best analog console to start with uh, of an audio under 6K? I don't know. I think it's a case of you finding something used. I used to make records on a on a TAC Scorpion, um, and it's probably the last time I saw one. It was about thousand um, dollars. It it was made by Amec. It was very affordable. It was a great great um, you know system. So I would basically do that. Um, blah blah blah. What drives do I use? Do you mean hard drives? I tend to use the rugged ones. I tell you my rugged drive story. Please like and share. Um, I'll tell you my rugged story. Oh, and by the way, when we finish, if you still want to ask questions, please, after we finish, we'll be on for an hour or so. After we finish, please, um, you know, please leave some comments and questions below afterwards. And I come back and I do answer stuff. So, you know, we, we this, this is all about community. It's all about helping each other. So, yeah, uh, somebody, Martin, knows my story. Okay, so let me show you. I don't get any. I just. I don't get any money from talking about this. But this is a rugged drive. Um, I have one. It's called like Warren One, and it's about. It was when I still lived in Silver Lake. So it's about eight or nine years old. Yes, the Tax Scorpion is very good value if you want to buy a console used. Incredibly good. It's Amec. It's their inexpensive Amec. I still would buy one now if I was building something. Please, by the way, go to check out the Produce Like a Pro Academy. You can do a monthly for $17. It's the cheapest out there, but you get a multi-track each month and you get like Vinnie Carluta playing drums. You get Tim Pierce playing guitar. You get John Button on bass. You get Sean Hurley. You get the best musicians in the world. You also get stuff recorded in a bedroom or stuff recorded at Sunset Sound or stuff recorded at United. You get lots of different genre stuff. So please go and do it. Okay, so rugged. I have one of these. It's down here somewhere for eight, I bought it eight years ago. I had bought a brand new Mac laptop. I had my bag, which is over here, my trusty bag, and I put in my laptop and the rugged drive. It's a Sunday night. It's 8 p.m. and I go out. And I, in those days, in the house we lived at, we had parking behind a gate for one car, and the other car was out on the street. So I walk out, it's 8 p.m. on a Sunday night. I have to go back and recall a, a mix. I really don't want to have to do it, but I do have to do it. Um, you know, so I go, I go there, and I go and 
look at the car and think, it's all the way out on the street. I'm going to have to find parking. I'm never get a good space again if I come back at one o'clock in the morning. So I think I'll use my wife's SUV. So I take my bag and I put it down. Hello, good evening. Um, I put it down by the SUV, but of course, I don't have the keys, so I go back in the house, I swap out the keys, I hang my keys up, I get her keys, I get in the car, I start the engine, I reverse the car, and I reverse over my bag. <laughs> reverse a huge SUV over a bag. I go out, I open it up. I open up my laptop, the screen is like completely trashed. There's a massive dent in my computer the size of you guessed it, a rugged hard drive, dented into the computer. Crazy. So this is dented into inside of the computer and I get to the studio, my laptop's completely dead. I fire up the rugged hard drive, still works. Still works this day, eight years later. So when you ask me what hard drives I use, I use rugged, okay. Fixing the mix is the last resort. You should take the, it's best to fix it at the recording stage. Yeah, recording stage, then the mix, you know, it's all, um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you just, the, you, the earlier you get problems, the better. Please like and share. I'm saying it again, fourth time. <laughs> Appreciate it. Please like and share. Wow, 281, you guys rock. Do I feel plug-in compression is on par with hardware? Great question. Do I feel it? I do at times. Um, I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions. Thank you. Um, how do I pronounce your name? Zivonmeyer. Zivonmeyer. Great name. Um, what do I what do I feel about that? I feel that hardware compression really does an amazing job um, it, it, because it's sort of intuitive to to take knobs and play with them. However. There's been so many shootouts between, um, you know, there's been so many shootouts between um, emulations and the real deals, and sometimes it's so close. And if the difference is difference, thank you for liking and sharing. I appreciate it. Um, thank you very much, Jack. Um, it's, it's so close that now we're moving into that world of, like, you know, look, we talked about Neil Avron earlier. Neil Avron mixes in the box. And his mixes are amazing. Mark Ender, the, arguably one of the greatest mixers in the world, mixes in the box. You know, these, the, and these guys are slammed, working, busy, making records every day, making the high stuff. They're not, they're not like, they're working all the time, you know what I mean? There's other guys that mix in a box that aren't working, and that's great. But these guys work, and they're mixing in the box. What is in the box? On your laptop, not breaking out your console. Um, yeah, sorry about that. We had a little uh, little uh, interruption there. Um, so you do an acoustic adaptation. Any producers have you met with that that you hate as people? Oh, <laughs> well, I'm not going to call any names. Some people nice as people are. You know, it's it's kind of our business, isn't it? You know, is it possible to be an audio engineer without a, sp a specialized education in it? Yes, I did not go to school for it. So that's kind of the bottom line. How do you master an album and get the tracks into one coherent project between the tracks? Uh, how do I do that? I mean, mastering is a whole process. You need to take time off from it and listen to the whole album as a whole and make decisions based on that. Favorite delays. You're talking about guitar delays or you're talking about inside. H delay is amazing. We love that. Echo Boy, I love. I've never talked to sound toys at all, but I think we've sold a lot of sound toys, a lot of Echo Boys over the years. Um, advice on attracting clients when you're just starting out. Uh, offer to work for free. You know, if you like a band, say, send me a song. If you mix it, I'll mix it for free. If you like it, you can pay me. If you can like it, you can do other stuff. You know what I mean? Build. Don't be afraid to work for free while you're building your 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 you're building your resume. It's just what we have to do, you know? Um, blah, 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 blah. Would you recommend, um, would you recommend a Shure SM58 um, 421 combination for recording heavy guitars? Yeah, I mean, you can do that. I know some guys that do that. There's so many different ways of doing it, but that's one way of doing it. Any tips on landing? I love the Sound Toys little plate reverb. 
I use cable as a DFW, but as a Gibson, I will no longer support it. You can recommend a PC DAW. I think Reaper seems to be incredibly popular with people. I personally um, don't. Um, I personally don't know much about cakewalks. So, you know, if there's, is there any cakewalk users here that could suggest another DAW that's similar? Favorite drummer uh, of all time? I think it's just like kind of the big six, you know, Bonham, Ringo, Charlie Watts. Uh, I mean, there's so many great drummers. I work with Vinnie Carluta, he's amazing. Uh, Victor and is amazing. Blair Sinter's amazing, you know. Um, do I dampen my room? Yes, there's acoustic treatment. If you can see up there, there's bass traps in the ceiling. There's acoustic treatment in the walls, but it's covered with cloth. Um, do, do I hate iLock? Not really, because I'm mainly in one studio. Kenny Arnoff's amazing. Simon Phillips is amazing. Yes, there's so many great. Do I use subwoofers? I actually did have a subwoofer connected for the longest time, and I stopped using it. Um, yeah, Victor's amazing. I stopped using it, um, and then I realized between the car test and here, I got so used to the room that I stopped doing the car test after I got used to it. Um, and, uh, you know, everything was great. Well, the iLock is only annoying to me when I was traveling. Now that I don't travel as much and I stay more in LA and I stay more at this one studio, it's not that big of a deal. But when I did, you'd be traveling with an iLock and you'd go to a new studio and you'd download all the plugins again and you'd have the authorization. Yeah, that's a pain in the butt. But if you're in one location, I haven't personally had any problems with iLocks. If I'm in one place, you know, it's only annoying when I, when I travel because having to reload all the plugins and reauthorize and all that stuff. Somebody's saying they like iLock. Oh, yeah, I haven't had a real major issue, but I get, I, I get it. If you're moving around and you're going from one place to another, yes, I've used tough consoles. I think they're incredibly good value for money. Cheap mics under $25. Oh, I don't know. I did, I did a shootout once on a $30 mic and it was kind of trashy, but I enjoyed it. It was good for sort of certain things. Um, I haven't used the latest sampler tube, but I always used to like it. Uh, what's my favorite vintage synth? Oh, uh, Jupiter 8, no doubt. The Jupiter 8 is, wow, what a synth. Um, have I ever worked with Michael Blue? Yeah, I worked with him years ago. Um, headphones or, um, or bad room with monitors? Well, bad room with monitors is never going to win. If it's really bad, it's going to be awful. You're better off with um, $300, mic uh, $300 monitors in a good sounding room than you are with the $10,000 monitors in a bad sounding room. So get your room. Thank you, Dylan. Um, best book for mixing. Wow. There's so many good books. What's that, What's that um, recording book? Give me a second. I'm going to find it for you. Dum -dum 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 -dum. So, sorry about that. This, 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 this has uh, been a book that a lot of students that we've had here have, have referenced. This one, Modern Recording Techniques. It's probably going to come up back to front because we're using the other mic thing. But um, that, that, is a, that is a really good book that has a lot of great information. I, I'm very impressed with it. It's really well written. The guy's called David Miles Huber. Um, and it looks like somebody called Robert E. Runstein is, is working alongside. That's a really good book. I think other than that, I like every, um, every producer and engineer's book that I admire, like Jeff Emmerich's. I think for, for production, you have to read Phil Ramone's book. It's unbelievable. It's a really, really amazing book. Um, so, um, Ken Andrews, yeah, he, he's good. I haven't heard his name for a while, but I, I, I remember him out in L.A. in the, in the mid-late 90s with that band. What was his band called? What was Ken Andrews' band called? Failure. Uh, yeah, the Mike Senior stuff is really, really good. It's, it's difficult because not a lot of great mixers and producers and engineers write books. It's, it tends to be educators and stuff like that. So this one seems to be very well written and I understand from actually doing this, sometimes the educator's books, I'm like, why are you explaining it like that? And then I realize that's because they're probably not doing it every day. So it's always difficult to find those kind of things. I think that's where YouTube has become really, really great. For me, it's been really, really wonderful. Um, yeah, I know he did some Paramore stuff. Uh, that, that rings a bell. 
Matt Mahaffey. I already interviewed him. Go and check out Matt. He's amazing. Now, Matt is insanely talented. Yeah, um, I don't know that Paul White book. I know there's a lot of the guys that are like um, journalists, aren't they, on like Sound on Sound and things like that. Those, they're, they're like writers for, and they write books and stuff like that. So what I like about, what I really enjoy for me personally about this world, about being on YouTube, self are an amazing band, yeah. What I love about this is it allows guys like me and you know, when I interview like Joe Ciccarelli and all these guys that I admire, um, you know, Cameron Webb, Ulrich Wilde, Bob, Bob Marlette, Matt Mahaffey. I mean, these guys are working every single day. They're super busy and they're too busy to have their own channels. I'm too busy to have my own channel. I don't know how I do it, but it's a great way because it, we're not like professional educators, um, but we're, we're giving you real world experience, not, not the opinion of how we do it, but actually how we do it. You know, and I think that, um, yeah, exactly. Somebody said that who are not experts. That's right. I'm not an expert. I find a lot of people that write books are experts, but they're not professionals. And then there's professionals that don't take the time or don't have the time or, or don't want to do education stuff. So it's kind of one of those things we try. What I love about YouTube. Hello there, Universal Taoist. Um, I think, yeah, I think this is really good. Like, I like Rick Beato a lot because I work with him and I know he's talented and he's an amazing musician. So when he does videos, I watch them because I know I'm going to learn something about music because I'm a musician that produces. You know, it's like really important for me to be musical. Thank you, Tisbonus. Yes, I am hardworking and I do work my, my butt off. And how do I get sideburns? You just grow them. Uh, anyway, so yeah, currently we're mixing an Ace Freely album. How much money do I put into my studio? A fortune. Uh, an absolute fortune. But I've been doing this for... Um, how do I treat a control room properly? I don't know, watch the John Brandt video. My John Brandt video and my and the Barry Rudolph video. Hey, are you online? No. Can you just, can you in the chat, can you put the John Brandt video and the Barry Rudolph video in the chat? Um, Eric's gonna put those in the chat so you can see them. And just just write alongside, you know, like uh, room treatments and stuff like that. You record with three mics on a guitar cab. Yeah, if you can get a great sound with that, that's fantastic. Uh, do I still keep up with jazz chops? I try, but you know, it's... I haven't tried Marshall Codamps. I am from England, yes, that's correct. Paul loves the Rick Beata to... Although I offend somebody if I say that I'm from England, apparently I can only say I'm from Britain. Which is funny, you know, because my, my, my family are like English, Irish, Scottish and Welsh. So, you know, but I was born in England, so I always just say England, you know what I mean? But uh, somebody got very upset with me on a, on a video and was like saying that I was belittling all of the other countries because I said I'm, I'm, I'm English. And I, I don't know, I'm very happy with some of my best friends are Scottish in particular. I'm, some of my family are Scottish. And of course, I have a very close family that are Irish. And so, you know, my mother's family. So it's funny, you know, none of them are ever worried when I say English. I, it's, it's, we live in that world, don't we, where everybody wants to be angry at you for something. Um, but I'm English, I'm British, I'm from the United Kingdom, I'm from Europe, I'm from the world, I live in America. I love everybody from everywhere. Yes, Huguenot, you know my last name, it's Huguenot. You see, Hewitt. Ah, we got some smart people online who understand etym et the etymology of names. Yeah, from Norfolk. I mean, yeah, it's funny. So anyway, I am I'm English, British, from the UK, from Europe, from the world, and you know, there you go. It's just, it is what it is. And Scottish. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? Look, here's a Scottish guy. Do you know the Scottish have the highest average IQ in the whole of Europe? Yeah, they do. They're freaking smart. It's like, you know, it, it, they are really, really smart. And if you look at inventors and stuff like that, they have like one of the highest percentage of, 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 of inventors over historically than any other country. So, you know, if I was Scottish, I'd be Scottish. And I don't mind, you know, Scottish people can be British too. Oh, so the Swiss do. Hey, no, the Swiss are right up there, trust me. <laughs> And he says, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Totally international. Yeah. 
Yeah, and there's a lot of Scottish engineers. Yeah, a lot of Scottish people. Um, do I do want work with labels? I do work, but um, I do work with labels. I do work with. Um, <laughs> there, Johnny Lipson says he has a, an IQ of 145. Scottish, who grew up in England. There you go. He's proving it. Um, anyway, so moving on from this silly conversation, it's just funny that I should bring it up. I apologise, but yes, yeah, some somebody got angry at me for saying I was English, and it's just like I am. Um, I, I, I'm British too, and I just, you know. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Do I start with a mix, uh, master bus compressor, and work in, put it up later? Do I ever work completely in the box? Yes, I do. Yeah, see some half Irish people. Um, so the I, I do I do doing completely in the box, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna push a course. I'm gonna push something Scotch as well. Um, the I'm going to push a course. Can you put up our course, the last one, the Mixing Classic Rock? I did that completely in the box. So I am selling something here. See what I just did? See what I just did? Am I, am I losing people? Does it go down to four people? No, people, more people are signing up. We're going to, Eric is going to put that up now. I think he is. On the description below, he said he's putting up the course. I don't know if you can see the description until it goes live. But, but anyway, um, see, somebody bought it. Colin built it. If you can put it in the chat as well, it'd be great. So this course is mixed completely in the box. And what I liked about this, we filmed it over a couple of hours, about three hours. What I liked about it is I actually made tons and tons of mistakes and I went back and changed things. And so you see, and I didn't use any drum samples and no tuning and no timing and no gridding. Um, hey, Ricky. Um, and all of this was done like in real time, so you can watch me make mistakes. It's one of my favorite courses to do. I have another uh, mixing in the box course I did as well, but this one, it's super cheap, highly recommend it, and you'll get to see how I mix in the box. Tell you something about Bob, about automation. What do you want to know about automation? Automation is what I always do last and in details. There you go, he's putting up the Pro Mix Academy course. So please check it out. Feel free to buy it, it's worth every penny. And join our, join our community, it's really wonderful. But anyway, um, automation, I do the automation last, typically. Um, what's my football team? Oh, you're gonna hate me, Chelsea. Born and bred, my, um, my great, great, no, my great grandfather was one of the original six investors. Um, and, because my, my father's mother was one of 13 kids, yep. <laughs> not Chelsea. <laughs> it says page not found. Did you check the link? Yeah, I copied it. Did you delete the end of the number or something? No. All right, I'm going to have to do this, guys. Sorry. Stop while I do this for Eric. Uh, sorry. Blah, 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 blah. I'm on it. <clears throat> Courses, mixing classic rock. I'm on it. All right, here it is, sorry. Try this, try that link. Can you try it and tell me if it works? Try that link. Is it working for everybody now? Yeah, I'm not sure why his doesn't work. It's really weird. It's working for me. All right. That's really, really weird. Use the link in the description. Does that work? <laughs> Don't pick on Eric. Promix Academy. Yeah, that works. I don't know why it's not working. Maybe they maybe they do some stupid thing in 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 YouTube where they block a link or something. I don't know. They're all messing with the algorithms. I'm just trying it again. Does it work now? Is the link working now? What he says, YouTube doesn't allow links in chats. Oh, link, YouTube doesn't allow links in chats. Is that what they're saying? Is that true? Is that true? That's that's what that's what someone in the chat said. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry, guys. Lose two dozen. Okay, so, okay, so click underneath the video. Can you see it? Sorry, everybody. Somebody says yes, they do. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not working. 
posted in the post. I did try. It's not working in the... Did you see it now? Delete everything. <laughs> Still not working. Did you... This works. Okay, did you... Are you clicking underneath the... Are you clicking underneath the description? Do you see it under there? Da, da, da. Working under video, people are saying. Working under the video. Click it under the video. There's a produce like a pro, and it says Warren's new mixing in the box course underneath. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, there must be blocking something in there. Um, thoughts on Mike Packing? Absolutely great. Yeah, in the description it works. Try it in the browser. Did you ever... Yeah, you might have to copy it and then put it in the browser as opposed to clicking from YouTube. I think they do stop doing things like that. Yeah, somebody says the Latina of, uh, escorts did this. It might also be we have something not enabled in our chat win window because that's the kind of thing that happens. That's the kind of stuff that happens. Thoughts on cats. I love cats. How lovely. You see, I suppose it does say ask me anything. Yes, of course, I love cats. Uh, I, from Bolivia, hello. Would you send a couple of demos my band and get that? I mean, send me a demo. I just can't guarantee I'm going to listen to it. I get about 400 emails a day, and I get lots of people sending me their band's demos, hundreds of them sometimes. It's really difficult to go through them all. And, you know, that's why I always encourage people to join the Academy. Um, I haven't tried the Antelope Audio Discrete 8 versus the VSR8 yet. Haven't done it yet. Um, have I tried Quiz Tones? I want to. I want to try Quiz Tones. Dan is a good friend, and I love what, I love what Dan Comanchero does over at Pro Audio Files. If you're not already a Pro Audio Files, um, you know, subscriber at YouTube, go and check it out. What was my band called? Uh, Star 69 and another one called Dis Disappointment Incorporated, Disync. So do me a favor, check that link where it says Warren's new mixing in the box course. Um, oh yeah, Ace's new album is amazing. How important do you think it is for all music credit mixing for establishing street cred? I think it's very important. I think there's so many guys and girls out there that are trying to build stuff, so um, you know, try to, I would definitely say it's important to build really good credits online. I do. Um, um, John Deacon from uh, P Bass Sound, P Bass Sound from Queen. Oh yeah. Well, my good friend, if, as you know, Tony Franklin, who the bass player from The Firm, you know, with Jimmy Page and Paul Rogers, he got, he started playing bass because of John Deacon. Um, yeah, I, I like Paul Jam. I'm not a huge fan, but I like him. Um, you know, I, I, I think uh, Mike McCready is a great guitar player. Um, yeah. Great drummer in that band. You should buy an interface like Scarlet or actually a mixer. Should I buy? I, I, Schnitz and Sniggles, yeah. Um, I would say yes. I, I personally use Audient inf interfaces um, when I'm mixing in the box. What's the one that we use? Can you grab it, the small one? Eric's going to show you the one we use, the Audient we use. I believe it's an ID4, yes? Uh, yeah. yeah, we use the ID4 when we're mixing in the box. So I'll have, like, it's really funny. I'll have this huge... I have this huge like console here, got the speakers, I'm in the control room, and it's all in the box going through this. <laughs> For real. So it goes through this. So when we're mixing in a box, that's how we do it. So when you, if you go to that course that's underneath, which is the Promix Academy one, um, that's the red sofas from uh, my old house. Um, used to be my, my mate's house couch. It was a wedding present when I got married. Uh, I haven't seen the Mac Dam Crow yet. Uh, metadata is important. Yes, it is very important to put to to make sure you have the right metadata on your um, on your tracks. Anyway, so the mixing in the box, all of it was done through monitored through an ID4. Gary is asking the real questions. Oh, about the couch. Yep. Do I lot use a lot of UAD? No, I don't. Oh, somebody bought the course. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just got a sale from it. That's very kind of you. You're, you're, you're paying for my for my time for being here. That's absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much, Trollstream. I really appreciate it. I know. I saw it. Hey, what is your real name again? Troll, because because we I know we talk a lot online, so I'm really terrible with, and I know because I, he's also in my academy. So if you're not yet, go into the academy. It's wonderful. Yes, ID4, it sounds great. So that course was all mixed through an ID4. Morton, thank you, Morton. Um, I don't know anything about the Mac DeMarco. Um, so I haven't used it, I can't have an impression. I'm not one of those guys, like a, a gear sluts guy who has opinions on everything they haven't used. Uh, the Academy is what I do. It's a Produce Like a Pro Academy. If you go to producelikeapro.com, you can sign up there. 
and and basically um, you can sign up there and every month we give out a free multi-track and then I mix critique all the mixes. It's pretty amazing. If you like football, you should be at Bocal Durham Studio. That would be great. I mean, Schnitz and Schniggles. Uh, oh, it's, uh, it's short for, you know, Giggles and S-H-I-T. Um, anyway, uh, RDD console, haven't used it yet, looking forward to. What's the model? Um, oh, what model shuttle is that? Wow, you think I remember. Oh, we, don't have the st we don't have the sticker on it. I don't remember. I'm a huge aviation and space buff. Um, the studio's called Spitfire, named after the plane. My publishing company's called Spitfire. You know, I have another company called Lancaster Audio, another one called Wellington. Oh, Mac DeMarco's a musician. Oh, right, okay, cool. I thought it was like, I thought it was a piece of gear. Thank you, Colin. Yes, Platt, Produce Like a Pro is a great. Digital Performer is great. Somebody asked me to play guitar, so. It's interesting to play guitar like this in front of us. Oh, Django, I love Django. Oh, yeah, it's because you heard. Those diminished runs, very, very Django. Have I heard Foxygen's latest album, Hang? No, but I'm going to look it up now. What's your favorite music style? Django was amazing. What's my favorite music style? I like a combination of... See, I grew up on classical music. If anybody knows my story, all I listened to was classical music. My actual... At the moment, this laptop and my cell phone is balanced on top of a, of a copy of the La Russe Encyclopedia of Music. The La Russe Encyclopedia of Music, which I think is one of the finest books on music, but it is 99.9%. Um, for Schnitzen, that just means, that's, that means just for like, for the heck of it, you know, just because we can. That's what Schnitzen sniggles. Um, that's what I mean, okay, <laughs> Andre. So anyway, yeah, just because we can, yeah, you know, just for the heck of it. All right, so um, yeah, I grew up on classical music, and then my dad bought me A Night at the Opera by Queen when I was a little, little kid. And so that got me excited into music. And yeah, favorite composer, Beethoven, by far. Beethoven and Elgar being English, but definitely Beethoven. Oh, I like Liszt, and no, there's no Liszt versus Chopin. I mean, I love it all. I love it all. Um, thank you, Andre. I appreciate it. So I grew up in classical music. Then I discovered match pair of microphones for overheads. Uh, get a pair of Lewitts. They match them perfectly, and they're really inexpensive. Oh, I love Bach too. I don't have a Stradivarius, you know, Rachmaninoff. All these people you're talking about. Um, flat wounds versus round wounds. Um, round wounds are great for like brightness and grit, and um, obviously. Um, the flats are going to be great for a warmer, jazzier kind of tone and all this kind of stuff. Oh, I love it. There's always one guy who says, are you gay? I'm not, but does it matter? Does it matter? Is it important to know somebody's stuff? It's such a funny world that we live in that that stuff is important. It shouldn't be important. You can be whatever you like. Um, <laughs> I, <it's laughs> you can be whatever you like. There is no place. Um, you can just be whatever you like. Yeah, there's always there's always there's always somebody that uh, wants to wants to bring in their own issues. Um, but anyway, um, I think I'm happy. Yes, I'm very happy. Yes, um, I think Izzy's coming up to the thing again. Do you want to see what she needs? Um, who's liking and sharing? Yeah, thanks, Jane. Jay, let's like and share. Yeah, I should have said yes, even though everybody knows I'm not. Does make it? Does it really matter? Doesn't matter at all, does it? Be whatever you want. Ah, oh, you just joined. Fantastic. Yes, I'm very happy. Thank you. Um, so, um, what are we looking at? Um, please come to Latvia. That would be amazing. 
Do I have bad days mixing stuff all the time? You know, whenever I do these courses, like the course I'm telling you about, please go and check it out. I am doing something with Joe Gilder. It's going to be amazing. Um, the course I'm telling you about is underneath here. Is underneath. It's the um, um, it's the Promix Academy one, and it's me mixing from scratch. I got more nervous doing that than I do when I'm mixing like a big, big album, because um, it's because when I'm doing that kind of stuff. Um, it, it's, I know that this is really important. I'm mentoring people, I'm helping people. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I, I, I know that this is so important that we help people and I wanna make sure that I'm doing the, thank you, I'm glad you love the course. Um, I, I'm gonna do some more stuff with Matt, I already did. I did an interview with Matt, look it up, Matt Mahaffey. Floats on Slate Digital, I love him. I love everything that Stephen does because Stephen's whole, you're not gonna find me trashing anybody really because Everything has a place. Everything has a place. If you've got a million dollars, you can buy a lot of incredibly expensive analog equipment. If you've got a hundred bucks, then there's other things that you buy. Do I use recall sheets? Not for a while, but yes. 22 years too late, Oasis or Blur? Both. I mean, I'm a huge Graham Coxon fan. I'm friends with Graham, as you know. Graham's one of my favorite guitar players, um, and so I was a huge, huge fan. Go and check out the interview I did with Graham. There's a Graham Coxon video. Sing you a song. No, I won't sing a song. You've heard me sing enough in videos. Uh, new big thing in the music industry. I don't know what the next big thing's gonna be. I have some ideas. Um, correct answer is pulp, pulp, love pins. No, 50 is not too late. 50 is not too old to be doing this. How big is my drum room and control room? Control room is bigger than my drum room. It's a small drum room. She says, hello, fellow Belgian, because Hewitt is a, is a Huguenot name. Ever used Jet City Amp? Yes, they're really good. We did, they're very bright, very, very bright, but we used them, we used them a lot on the last Aerosmith record. Do I have a record label? Yes, I do have a record label. I have a record label on a publishing company. Pulp are the best, his and hers, awesome album. Yeah, it's a great album. But Modern Life is Rubbish was, uh, Modern Life is Rubbish is one of the greatest albums of that period to me. Remember, it predates The Benz, which is a masterpiece. But Modern Life is Rubbish was one of those first albums that harped in and listened to all of the kind of stuff that I loved. So I highly recommend Modern Life is Rubbish. What's the story, Morning Glory? Amazing, amazing stuff. Um, really, really good. I'll, I'll get some, um, you know what, go to barryrudolph.com, barryrudolph.com, who's a contributing editor for us on our site. Go there and you can download any recall sheets that you need. They're absolutely amazing. Um, that is a Pacifica. I'm not sure which one. It was 600 bucks. Biffy Cairo's last time is great. Uh, fan of film score stuff. Yeah, I love, I love tons of film score stuff. I like, love John Williams in particular for obvious reasons. Um, when you get a fresh mix, where do you start? And why? I always ask for a rough mix so I can get an idea of what they're doing. Uh, still you're down without Walter Becker. That's going to be crazy, isn't it? Um, but then again, you know, Donald Fagan's solo album is absolutely amazing. Do I love Robert, Robert Palmer? Yes. Am I a T-Rex fan? Of course. Yeah, of course I am. Um, who wouldn't be? Um, how do you connect your desk to Pro Tools? I use um, IOs, you know, and so basically they come out into the back through, you know, Elco connections on the back. Yeah, John Williams is amazing. He's easy moment. What's, what's the highest frequency you can hear? You're only at 11K? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, I, I tested out in the top 90 something percent percentile for my, for my age group. I'm in like a very, very small, uh, do I like any snails? Yes. Um, I, I, I still have very, very high frequency hearing for my age, but I've protected my hearing. Um, thank you, Andre. You know, I've protected my hearing as long as I can. I highly recommend you do that. Don't know Mr. Bungle. Um, I'd have to think about what that is, sorry. Can you please like and share? 263 of you online, you rock. Please like and share. Um, then the YouTube algorithm tells people we're online. Amazing how that works, the, uh, the algorithm. So please like and share. Do I have tin tinnitus? No. But I know friends of mine that do. Do drums detune themselves? Yes, drums will go out tune the more you play them. Oh, Mr. Bungle, yeah, I know what you mean now. Uh, yeah, Mr. B I know with my pan. Yeah, I know what you mean now. See, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes I don't, doesn't compute to me. First instrument start mixing on. If it's rock, 
Rock, rock, definitely drums. And then vocals are super important. If it's pop and r and B, I'll probably spend more time on the vocal than anything else. Um, have I tried AML 500 series stuff? Yeah, AML make incredible stuff. Do you know Austin Powers? Well, I haven't seen her in a while, but Susanna Hoffs is an old friend of mine from years ago, and her husband is um, Jay Roach, and Jay Roach directed all of the Austin Powers movies. So definitely. Um, I believe in God. Do I mix uh, and record or wait until it's all tracked? These days, it's a little bit of all of that because, you know, I'm essentially mixing and recording as I go, but I still mix at the end. Avidus Audio, yes, great stuff. Tips on lo-fi recordings, use as few amount of mics as possible. If you're using multiple, multiple mics, it starts to get too hi-fi. So try to use a small amount. What's your favorite crazy or weird th plug-in in Pro Tools? I don't know what's crazy, but I love Sansamp. I can just trash anything. Sansamp comes free with Pro Tools. It's just the best distort it, mess it up plugin. Uh, Glenn Fricker is actually a really, really sweet guy in real life. Yes, less is more. I like SC Electronics mics. Ozotype is great. Any thoughts on reference mixing and mastering? Yes, find some of the stuff you absolutely love. I always use Hey Soul Sister, you know, but it's been a while since I've referenced necessarily that, but that's the one I go to. Bob Clear Mountain, Woman in Chains, masterpiece of a mix. You know, there's a lot of different stuff. Find things that are in that genre that you're mixing that you think are fantastic and reference those. Mix engineers, school worth it. Um, it depends. Sc schooling is about you. Do you like classrooms? Do you like structured schooling? Does that appear to you? Then go and do that. Top three waves plugins. R bass MV2 is a masterpiece. And I use the REQs every day. Oh, and Arvox, that's the four. But definitely MV2. MV2 is one of the best plugins ever made. Um, uh, when you use a plugin SSL strip, uh, I use both. I use the plugin SSL strips, the Waves one, and of course I have an SSL. And advice on drive, jazz recording, love your channel, thank you. Jazz recording, use the fewest amount of mics possible and check your polarity and phase. Went to Berkeley in 1985 and hated it. Well, Berkeley's a great school, but yes, if you're not, if that's not what works for you, Max Bass is great too. Um, if it's not what works for you, I totally get it. My house is full of uh, Kniegers and what do to get read of them? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Oh, I think you're making a Mike Myers. Jesus, heed! What do you do if your master fails the car test? Go and remaster, <laughs> honestly, yeah. She's at the low end that you're gonna find it. Do, you got, do I get the days off? Very rarely. I have Sundays off, technically, but I still end up, you know, answering emails, listening to demos. Have I done binaural recordings? Yeah. What is the car test? It's what I do to go and when I'm not sure of the low end, I'll go in the car because they usually have it incredibly a huge amount of low end and find out whether my I've, I've mixed my low end properly. Please like and share. Thank you, everybody. You rock. Uh, this feed from YouTube has electronic static pulse in this. Favorite Queen tune. I'm sorry about that. I'm not, I, I can't hear it here. I've got it turned down. Uh, what's my favorite Queen song? Bohemian Rhapsody, Queen album, Night of the Opera, um, Jazz, uh, Game, uh, Day at the Races, News of the World, I don't really, am I high? No, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> liked and shared. Yes, please, please like and share. Can you use M33 for reference mixes? Yes, you won't get the super low 20 Hertz and you won't get like the 20K, but do I like XTC? Heck yes, love XTC. English Settlement and Black Sea, two of the, I'm high on life here, two of the best albums ever made. Been uh, listening to Ashes to Ashes constantly since you are JJ Blair. Oh yeah, what a masterpiece. Oh, somebody else said, oh, you gay, probably a joke. Queen jazz is underrated in some of the most experimental music for the 80s. Oh, yeah, jazz is a masterpiece. Uh, do I usually always master songs you mixed yourself? No, I try to give them to other people to master, and I highly recommend that. Do I like Jellyfish? I love that first album. I think it's great. I'd, I'd love to remix it and get it a little bit rawer and fatter, um, but the songs are absolutely incredible. What's your weirdest microphone? What's our weirdest microphone? What's our weirdest microphone? Where are all those weird microphones I have? <laughs> Where do they all go? They are the weirdest microphone. We have weird microphones. I'm going to find a weird microphone for you. You ask. Can we get Izzy to go to the veggie grill and pick up some kind of salad thing? Here you go. Yeah. This is called a Lafayette. And it's got a on-off here. 
And I don't know if it's a crystal, I don't know if it's a crystal or dynamic, but that's, that's one of my weirdest microphones. Hopefully you can see it okay. It's a pretty weird mic. Oh, squeeze. The better, better, better it gets. The more my lips frequent, now that is love. What a song. What an amazing song. Here's another one. These are all eBay finds. For about 70 bucks, I bought like 20 different mics. This one is made in the US. It's a Shure. This is a Shure. It's, uh, it's omnidirectional. It's called an Omnidyne. So it's omnidirectional dynamic microphone. Uh, it doesn't have an on-off switch. Oh yeah, it does. Down the bottom. Um, what else? Oh, this one. This one, I don't know what much about this one. Um, it looks like the stickers come off it. Probably this, I imagine, like a lot of these microphones would have come from reel-to-reel -reel recorders in the 40s and 50s, the early ones, late 40s, early 50s, when reel-to-reel -reel took off. You see this one here? It's got my name on it, but yeah. So this would have, these would have been like for your reel-to-reel. -reel. When I was a little kid, my dad had an old reel-to-reel -reel and he recorded me talking as a baby. And I'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, absolutely great. So please, as ever, we're just talking about, go check out my course. The link is underneath. If you want to join the, the academy, you can do that. It's, uh, it's $17 a month or you can buy a full year. Uh, what is your John Lennon, what's my favorite John Lennon song? Oh, all right, I'll play you my favorite John Lennon song. It's, I have many of them. My two favorite John Lennon albums are Double Fantasy, produced by my very good and incredibly talented friend, Mr. Jack Douglas. I believe that is a masterpiece. Double Fantasy, it's got, you know... Anyway, so it's got woman on it, it's got watching the wheels, it's got starting over, um, it's got all kinds of incredible stuff. So apparently that's gay to like John Lennon, you know. <laughs> that's what happens um, when, you get, when you get people that, uh, um, people that uh, aren't here to learn and help each other. What we have is we have this incredible community here. Please like and share. Really appreciate it. We have an amazing community here. Beautiful boy. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that's like, hello there in Italy, Carlo. Any thoughts on automated online mastering services? Do they work? I mean, I'm really good friends with Shelly Yakis and he is one of the guys, um, um, he's one of the guys that, uh, um, should I use a sub? I'll quickly say, should I use a sub? It depends on your room. If you've got very small speakers, probably, yeah. Protest too much? Um, so, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That's funny. I, I, I don't mind if you think I'm gay. You're missing the point. That's really funny. I don't care if you really, if, if, that's actually not a problem. It's like, um, what, what my point is, is like, why is that important what somebody's sexuality is? We're gonna be really serious for a second. Why is that important? Just let people be people. You know, let people be people. I don't, it doesn't, shouldn't matter if you're black, white, pink, purple. My favorite color is blue. It doesn't matter. We're all human beings. We're in this world together. So, and it doesn't matter. Exactly. It's not important. The British and the Aussies don't care. Nobody cares. That, that, if you're pointing that out, it's because you have an issue. I don't have an issue. Though, you can ask me all day. You know, if you want me to be gay for the next 20 minutes, I'll be gay. I'm not, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if I was. My favorite rapper, I don't know much about rap, but um, I'm not an expert, because I don't like to be talking about things that I don't know that much about. I will say my favorite rapper would have been, would be Gil Scott Heron. Oh, I'm not feeding the trolls. I just think it's important because I, I believe in community. It's really important. Um, <laughs> I believe it's really important um, that we have a really supportive community here and that everybody helps each other out. Um, how much do I RAM do I have in my computer? I think I have 16. Um, I think 16 is pretty, eight, eight to 16 will do the job um, quite easily. And most computers come with at least eight these days. But anyway, I think what the, it's really important for me to have a great sense of community here. Um, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there by people that, that bash each other, you know? I don't want to be in that world. 
Um, we, we're, we're really good friends on this channel with Dave Pensado. We just did a, um, an interview with him. He's a good friend. We're really, yes, I do get starstruck. Meeting Ken Scott. Did you watch this Ken Scott video? Go check out the Ken Scott video I put up two days ago. I was almost crying. Um, yeah, Gil Scott Heron's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, why are people keen to label people? Because they want, they want to be noticed. People will say stuff like that. Um, yeah, we're all gay for 20 minutes. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, but this is all about community. It doesn't matter which country you're from. It doesn't matter what your religious beliefs are. We're all human beings. This is about politics. Everything aside, we don't talk politics. We don't talk religion. This is a place for us to help each other and come together and have an amazing... Um, I can't play the solo on Taxman. I should play that. Yeah, Gil Scott Heron's amazing. The other guy I really liked, getting back onto rap, sorry. Um, thank you very much. Um, yes, the Plap Academy is an amazing community. The the reason why um, the other guy I really love was uh, um, the guy from Disposable Heroes of Hypocrisy. Remember that record? Television, the drug of the nation, breeding ignorance and feeding radiation. Television. It was like... That was a great record, Disposable Heroes of Hypocrisy. I, I also liked um, Guru. Uh, I thought that was amazazing. Um, there was some great stuff in the mid mid 80s to mid 90s, early 90s. Um, I love that stuff. I didn't really like rap from the 90s on. Michael Fronte is great. Yeah, Guru is amazing. I love all the acid jazz stuff, brand new heavies, all of that stuff was amazing. This morning we were listening to, we were doing Feedback Friday. And we were listening to it, and um, Nathan Frankenstein, yeah. Oh, you know what? And this, I think Kendrick Lamar is finally somebody... I think Kendrick Lamar is finally somebody that, that is getting back to the basics and doing great stuff. Have I been listening to Joy Division? Love Joy Division. Absolutely love it. Brand new heavy is amazing. Joy Division, The Cure, that whole period. There's something about the mid late seventies to the mid eighties, which is unfreaking believable in music. So good. How hard is it to make blabber? Uh, uh. um, the um, uh, ba 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 ba. Can I play a lute? I suppose so. If it's got strings, I can play it. Uh. Do I like Steely Dan? Of course. How, I, I want to go back to this question here from Normand Lanois. Uh, because uh, they say, Normand says, how do you make money in the music industry? Well, these days, um, you know, you have to get yourself out there. It's really, really important. You do need a website. You need a web presence. You need people to know. Because you can be in any country in the world and mix. That's what's great. You can also do production anywhere in the world, you know. So make sure, you know, just get yourself out there. Make sure people know you're there. Um, that's really, you've got to start with that. The Cure, yeah, I love it. Hello, Luke. I think tips on mixing bass guitar. Um, you, bass guitar for me lives between fundamentally like 80 and 100, still has a bit of 60 in it, but like 80 and 100. Um, but also, you know, 751, 1.5K can really give you like mid-range kind of punk. Uh, punch. You ever tracked Auto Harp on any tips? Definitely. Echo and the Bunny Moon, yeah, wonderful. James Bond theme, amazing. Uh, why is... That was a question. Why is... Making money uh, in the music business, multiple revenue streams. Exactly. You need to be writing songs, playing instruments. Favorite bass line? Ah, oh, it's easy. Exactly. Mr. Bungle, Depeche Mode, do I like John Mayer? Sure, I like John Mayer. Love John Martin, though. Check out John Martin. Um, he, was, he was English with Scottish parents, so he identified as Scottish. Uh, incredibly talented guy. Incredibly talented. Yeah, go check him out. Um, lots of Paul, Paul McCartney. What other bass lines? Oh, yeah. See who knows this. Uh, I would love to record Peter Green, but I believe he's dead. You know what that is? Uh... 
Yeah, come on, come on over. Woo! The winner is Tomasz. Where are you? Are you in? Uh, are you in Poland? Grace and Danger. Yeah, it's an amazing record. Well, I, uh, Grace and Danger is an amazing record. You know, I know the story behind that. Sandy Robertson, who I've got to interview, uh, managed John Martin. Poland. Yeah, my wife's Polish. You got it. Come on, come over. The winner is Poland. Um, for knowing that, and of course, everybody now knows it's uh, Jaco Pastorius. Um, so basically, um, they made that album on a wing and a prayer. They didn't have much of a budget. So Sandy called Phil Collins, Eric Clapton, all the best musicians in the world, and basically said, how much will you do it? Um, great. Oh, fantastic. We love you. Yeah, Glenn's great, and you're Poland, and you play music. Love it. Um, so the... Yeah, so what was I saying? Um, so they had like no money, well, very low budget. And so everybody, Clapton, Phil Collins, all the people that played on Grace and Danger did it basically for either free or super cheap because everybody in there and their and their dog is a huge John Martin fan. Super amazing talent. Right, please like and share. Those of you who have not liked and share, please like and share. Do I use auto tune? Uh, please like and share before I answer that because people will get upset with me. I'm just joking. <laughs> Please like and share. Um, so do I use auto-tune? Uh, I mean, yes, but only if I don't have the singer there and somebody sent me something to mix and there's a note that's like absolutely horrific. If I've got the singer there, we'll try and work them. We tune as a last resort where we have no... Um, yeah, Avid Brothers are great. Um, when was... La where were you when Live Aid was on? I was sitting in Carlisle in the north of England Watching it with my band. It was freaking amazing. Didn't leave the room. Absolutely amazing. Uh, Arctic Monkeys are great. Uh, do I have an album I've written, recorded, and published, and everything? Yeah, tons of them. Uh, loads of them. Um, status quo, yeah. Am I still in England? No, I live in Los Angeles. I don't live in England anymore. Sorry, I don't live in the United Kingdom and Britain. I don't want to offend the person that doesn't like me saying I lived in England. Uh, do you use boundary mics and applications? Yeah, absolutely. Any stories of difficult artists? Like I say, the weirdest thing is, is like producing your own band. That's actually the most difficult thing. So the difficult artists, when you're wor working with your own band, you're going to get, because they see you as, a, as an equal, they don't see you as a producer, they don't take your opinion any more seriously. So it's a little difficult. Have I used, uh, have you heard uh, Wolfbeck? Yeah, of course. Uh, do you, um, any odd jobs to get, um, was that? Do you do any odd jobs to get by when you first came to LA? What were they? Oh yeah, I mean, I've done all kinds of stuff. I mean, when I, you know, I mean, yeah, everything. I've done roofing. Yeah, whatever you have to do to make 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 it, you know what I mean? Uh, what would you, where would you play Mike on a drum kit if you only had three or four to work with? Uh, if I only had three, I'd do kick and two overheads and do a kind of Glyn Johns. If I had four, click, uh, kick, two overheads, and snare. Yeah, roofing. Um, I was... Can you do an American accent? Is that good? Um, that was it. That's all you're going to get from me. Um, um, the roofing thing was, what happened was, I went on tour... And when I got back, I was on tour for, for quite a few months. There was no work, um, you know, so I just did anything I could to get by while I was building myself back up. When you leave a, a city for a few months, uh, how much or how many guitars? Uh, maybe 40. Um, so, when I, um, so when I got back, I just had to do anything to, make, to pay the rent. It's just what you have to do. How was it working with the fray? Absolutely wonderful. I mean, I was talking to Ben yesterday, the drummer. We're still really good friends. Um, do we use Main Stage 3 for live? No, I don't. Uh, I don't really play live very much. Uh, I appreciate all your openness. You're very welcome, Martin. That's what. That's the ask me anything. Why do you have a space chat, a space shuttle in the background? Well, I'm obsessed with aviation. My studio is called Spitfire. My birthday present, or my Christmas present, is to go up in a PT-17. You know what a PT-17 is? I'm flying in one of those. Um, Love aviation. My son is 11 and loves aviation too, and space. So we built a Lego space shuttle. 
Any bizarre, rare mic techniques? Yes, miking a symbol in front of the kit. You ever heard of an Avro Aero? Of course, James Bond. Spitfire, name of my studio. PG-17s are awesome. Uh, you were in the Air Force before I started engineering. That's amazing. We have quite a few Air Force people around here. Any tips on mixing with headphones only? Our space plugins? Space as it is. Spitfire fighter plane is the best. Uh, I'll sell you a Tesla. It's just, it's just still in space. There you go. PT-51, yeah, I love it. High pass, low pass on stereo, some. Not on the bus, but maybe on things that have to be, um, it just depends, you know. High passing and low passing is the secret to a really, really great mix. Please ignore the people that tell you not to high pass. They don't know what they're talking about. And mastering engineers are telling me that they're getting mixes now with the low end that's a big, big mess because everybody's afraid to high pass. Don't be afraid to high pass. Do I like time in Taming Pilot? Yeah, oh, absolutely, wonderful. <laughs> Is the Millennium Spaceship the best, <laughs> Millennium Falcon the best spaceship ever? Of course. Baritone guitar, um, great for rock. Yeah, stop muddy this high pass. Please don't be confused by people putting up shock videos to try and get noticed. Favorite Tame Impala album? Oh, I don't know. I can't even think of an album name at the moment. All I can think of is Queen at the moment. The Millennium Falcon does rock. All right. Please like and share. We're at 298. Let's get this to over 300. Please like and share. Um, Snarky Puppy. Yeah, they're great. I love that guitar player. That great groove. Get it up to over 300. Yay, we did it. Hello in Denmark. What's my favorite reference CD when you're tracking and mixing? Um, it's only one or two songs. There's not CDs, not whole albums. Um, you know, and again, it's uh, Hey Soul Sister for vocals and sparseness. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Sean, oh, that we went a long time ago. Best interface with analog outputs, say 24. Um, I have Apogee, I have Audient, I have Avid, and I have Lavery. My favorite, favorite, favorite IO is Lavery. It's not cheap, but amazing do i like radiohead does the pope crap in the woods of course i love radiohead the Benz is one of my favorite records to me the mid 90s had a little peak with modern life is rubbish and the Benz blurs modern life and rubbish and the blends and then the gorillas at the tail end some of the greatest stuff pulp we were talking about earlier there's some really great records made in in the mid 90s mid and early 90s and definitely radiohead have a couple of those do I ever use FaceTime 11 tools for drum tracks? Yes, but I do it manually. I don't like to manipulate the whole track. Um, do I? Would I work with Stuart Copeland? Of course I would. He's an incredible. Kid A is a great record. Of course I'd work with Stuart Copeland. He's an incredible musician. The Police are one of the greatest bands ever. I love OK Computer, but I prefer the Benz. OK Computer was one of those albums that was discovered in America because they missed the Benz. Because out here initially, radio and people didn't like the Benz because it wasn't, they wanted to hear, you know, you know, uh, they wanted to hear Creep. And they were a little, they were a little disappointed when they first heard that, you know. Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, thoughts on Melodyne? I, I use Melodyne for when I want to artificially create harmonies. It's really good at doing it. But I can also do that in Autotune. But I like, and I like the Melodyne guys. They're really good people. Even though I don't use it every day, I know people that do. And they, as a company, are awesome. Great, great people. Really, really good people. Um, can you phone Andy Summers and Gordon Summers and have them show up at Stuart's house? Yeah, that'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Uh, Radiohead are not suing Lana Del Rey. They're not suing her. I don't know why she said that. I love Lana Del Rey, especially her first album. But everybody, even Lana Del Rey's, Del Rey's um, even Lana Del Rey's um, lawyers themselves said that they haven't received a lawsuit. I don't know what happened there. You know, their lawyers, the publishing company, ever worked with Adele inadvertently, indirectly, because she recorded at my studio. She recorded uh, Someone Like You. Uh, Pro Tools 7 Advice. It's been a while since I've used 7, uh, but it was great. Uh, do I use Easy Drum? I have done. It's great. Yeah, internet happened. Yeah. Yeah, she's great. That first Lana Del Rey record is amazing. When we were doing the, um, the last Aerosmith record, she came in, she was dating one of Stephen's friends, and she came into the control room, and I was uh, mixing, I was working on a probably Legendary Child or something like that. Uh, Windows or Mac, whatever you know best. Um, if you're a Windows guy, stay on it. If you're a Mac guy, stay on a Mac. Know your computer. 
knowing your tools is better than, than, than choosing between two very similar tools. Just know your tools. Use the DAW you know best, that's the best one. Use the microphones you know best, use the mic pre's you know best, use the equipment you know best. Um, anyway, so she comes into the control room and it was when her album was number one in England and she couldn't get arrested over here at that time. And we, at the moment we stopped and the music, you know, the music, I turned around to her and I held up my hand and I was like, I love your album, it's amazing. At that point, everybody in the room, all their ears perked up, like, who is this girl, you know? And then they realized it's Lana Del Rey and, and like, it was pretty amazing. I was really, really impressed with, with that first album. It's a masterpiece. It's a great piece of production, great songwriting. Uh, do I like Sid Barrett? Of course. Kids are awake. Oh, okay, see you later, Sean. How much money do you make on average in a year? I have absolutely no idea. I run so many different businesses, I just pay myself a living wage. The rest of it just goes for paying for everything. Uh, I don't know much about surround sound. I've mixed, I've mixed a few 5-1 records. Do I like contemporary Christian music? Some of it's really good. Um, uh, what was AMA for doing AMA? Do I like, oh, I love Norton Newton Faulkner. He's a friend of mine, I haven't spoken to him. Um, some of that mid 90s stuff is pretty awful sounding now, you know? It's pretty awful sounding. And some very famous, very expensive people made those records for a lot of money. But most of the time, it sounds like they're trying so hard to make a roomy drum sound that it just sounds like one mic in a bathroom. So I'm not saying a bit particularly about that, but some of it's pretty freaking awesome. And it's hard to believe that they were making those albums for half a million dollars or a million dollars a time. It's like, where's the, where's the freaking punch on the drums? Um, oh, Sam did? That's great. Yeah, he's really awesome. I had dinner with him a couple of years ago. I haven't seen him in a while. His tour manager is one of my best friends, Patrick Hannon, who's the drummer for the Sundays. Any opinion on Reaper? Yeah, it's great. I don't personally use it, but lots of my friends do. It's absolutely amazing. Hey, would you like and share? Those of you that are online who haven't li yet liked and share, please like and share the video. Thoughts on mixing in mono? Um, if you want to go for mono, mix in mono. Most people I know mix in stereo and check in mono for phase. Uh, do I like Marillion? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's my age group. I, I love that band. Yeah, they were great. It's like a second wave. Networking. Um, if you're talking about networking, be positive. You know what? Be positive. The other day I was going back through old, old videos. It was a vocal one. And this guy was like trash talking me on the video saying how the vocals sounded terrible and over compressed and distorted. There's that video where like half, half a lot of people have been saying it's clipped even though when we play it's not clipped i think it's probably either the algorithm or or they're listening at le less than 1080 if you listen le less than 1080 you you will get uh you will get uh that's johnny myrith um so you know the um ever recorded cowbell funny uh, yes, of course. Uh, the, so anyway, so this guy was trolling and saying the vocals were too compressed or this, that, and the other, which is fine. And then, um, and then somebody else was like, yeah, it sucks, so I, this channel, blah, blah, blah. And for some reason, I thought I'd click on their thing, and I clicked on their thing. And the guy was a really good guitar player. And I'm thinking to myself, what... Do, 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 do people, do we not understand? This is a really good topic of conversation. Um, do people not understand how business works here? You know, we're, we're trying to help each other. The reason why I love Produce Like a Pro is like, this is all about being positive and helping each other. We've got five dislikes of, of, of people here that um, uh, want to make it about something else. But the reality is we have 326 people like this because you're super, really, really, um, you know, um, supportive of each other. And being supportive and being a part of this community is a wonderful thing because everybody here helps each other. We're all about helping each other. And like in our academy, there's no trolling. There's like, it's zero troll. It's a troll free zone. Because first of all, we'll just eject you. It's not gear sluts. It's not here to like tell each other you're superior to each other. It's here to actually help each other. We're trying really, really hard to help each other. That's the reason why we have this community. So there's this kid or this guy and he's leaving this trash comment on, on my video. And I did decide to check out who it was. I don't know why I did. The comment was like two years old, so it's old. So it's taken me two years to click on his comment, but I click on it and he's playing some really nice guitar. But I'm thinking to myself, why would I reach out to this guy 
and tell him he's a really good guitar player because obviously he's kind of a D-I-C-K. He's kind of a person that you wouldn't want to, to hire. Why would I want to hire with somebody who leaves like expletives or trash remarks? You know, it's, you understand what I mean. Yeah, I do care, but, but you understand what I mean. If you want to build community and you want to get along and you want to, like you're asking about networking, if you, um, you know, if you want, but it's not about me and my videos. It's about like me trying to help. Thank you. For, um, thank you. I understand people will always hate. But the thing is, is like, you know, there's, uh, I, I went to a channel the other day and somebody had said something negative about me and the guy highlighted it and put it at the top of his video. I mean, really? Are you that? competitive and self-obsessed that you would do that but that's just to me it's like we it's a hear about building community it's it's about community community and helping each other out you know nobody here is an expert like i'm not an expert and like i was saying i used to say don't use multiband compression on a vocal and then what happened mark endo said he used it on my favorite vocal hey soul sister not my favorite performance but my favorite sound so i'm stand corrected I stand corrected. Multi-band, done properly on a vocal can be amazing. That's the place I want to live in. I want, um, I want to live in a place where we help each other out, where we all share ideas and we have this positive, positivity, helping, not trying to pretend. Um, yeah, we do. We care about music. We care about music. This is a place where we're all passionate mm -hmm. and humility and humanity. That's why it doesn't matter what country you're from, whether you're from Pakistan, like earlier, or Brazil, or England, or New Zealand, or Germany, or Scotland, or Ireland, or Wales, America, you name it. We're all here, you know, Saudi Arabia, Oman. We've got all these different people from everywhere, from the Middle East to Africa, to every continent in the world, lots of Russians, everybody here. We all share the same thing. We love music, or Antarctica. We love music. There's no... Sweden, yes, sorry, Sweden. It's all about helping each other out. So when that guy left that trashy comment, it's like, I wouldn't recommend working with this guy because he obviously has, yeah, what's wrong with good old peace and love and understanding, Elvis Costello, Iceland, Iceland, Dubai, Ukraine, Australia, yeah. It's all about like, the guy's a great guitar player, Argentina, hello, Netherlands, yeah. It's like, let's help each other out. Belgium. I have lots of family in Belgium. Lucan, you name it. Um, so that's the point. Portugal, beautiful. I've had many great holidays. Vacations, as Americans say. So, yeah. Rockford, Illinois. Oh, wow. Rockford. Bit of cheap trick in the house. And from hell. <laughs> Brazil, Australia, Scotland. Yeah. You know, we love the Scottish Southwest UK. Yeah. The world. Exactly. The world. There's the point. Italy, North of Virginia, Nigeria. That's the point. That's the point. The world. Um, so, you know, that's Amsterdam. Beautiful. Barbados. Mars. Yeah, exactly. Virginia. Chicago. Birmingham. Yeah. Home of, uh, home of Black Sabbath. The world. Again, the world. Pluto. Exactly. You're all getting the point. So, the, if you're talking about networking, be positive. Um, help each other out. Planet Earth, yes, definitely. More at Italy. Do I have time for tea? I'm hoping so. Um, so, yeah, it's like, let's all help each other out. You know, going and leaving a trash comment or, or, or even posting a YouTube video trashing other people, it's like, oh. It's like, what is the point? It's like, it's all about, for me, it's all about collaboration and community. Essex, yay, in the house. You have been absolutely wonderful. Let's see if we can find some more. Um, I do fancy a cup of tea. Haters are going to hate. Are we still going to do Stonehenge? Yeah. Fargo. Do I have any weird outboard gear? Uh, yeah, please like and share. Please like and share, everybody. Um, learn from everyone. Exactly. I learn more from my Academy members than they learn from me. And they all teach each other. That's why we love the Produce Like A Pro Academy. By the way, quick sales talk. Go to ProduceLikeAPro.com. Sign up for the email list. You can join the Academy. Also, another sales talk. Check out my $37 Mixing in the Box course from Classic Rock. Mixing Classic Rock. Weird piece of gear. Where's that? Where's the, um, where's the shore? What's that down there? Is that it? I'm going to find some weird pieces of gear. We saw the weird, um, where's the shore, the little shore mixers.
Oh, to the, the... Yeah. So Eric's going to find the Shure mixer. We did the weird microphones. You know, you've all got to see the weird and wonderful microphones. There's more of them. Here's a, here's a weird grey one. Another Lafayette. Um, so we like our weird gear. Do, 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 do. Oh, we've yeah, got a Mackie mixer, but what, where's the Sony? So, where's the, where the, uh, the Shure, you know what I mean? Yeah, I got it. Here's a Mackie mixer. This is what we were using for those metal guitars with Glenn Fricker. So it doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, yeah, cheap digital fits. Oh yeah, Quadroverb. I have a Quadroverb, I have a Microverb. You can get those super cheap. The Quadroverb's on my kick drum all the time. Um, do I play bass? Yes. Produce like a bro, yeah. Produce like somebody who comes. Have you recorded Aspen? I haven't recorded with Aspen stuff yet. I'm going to. Going to buy your course tomorrow. Both you and Glenn are my favorites. Thank you. So yeah, go and please check out the course underneath or you can join the Academy. Both are absolutely wonderful. Thank you for those that have already uh, bought it. That was amazing. Thank you. Um, can you ever too much cowbell? No, never. Live console for studio. Um, Joe Salyers was using a Midas live console. You don't know where the, uh, the Shore is? Anyway, we have this Shore mixer that has the level lock built into it. Uh, Royal Blood, I love that stuff. I thought it was great. Can you give me some advice on tonal balances and mixes? I think you've got to reference a lot. You really do. MIDI Verb 2, yep, is great. Do you think the virtual microphone system is really the future of the studio? Absolutely. For most people, the ability to buy stuff, yes, definitely. It's the future. It's also kind of the present as well. 58 or 57, Vogue, both, either, both work. Uh, do you record live hand claps or percussion or use samples? I do live. Um, any colleges you know that teach great mixing engineers, affordable universities? If you're in America, I really highly recommend IU. My friend over at IU is Michael, uh, Michael Stucker. He helped design the 1173 with me. Definitely check that out. Um, hello in India. Oh, Indiana. Oh, Indiana. Sorry. Yes. So, Bloomington, IU. There we go. Um, go check out their course. Um, really, really good. Michael Stucker, absolutely amazing, IU. Uh, please like and share. Am I coming to the UK anytime soon? Uh, hopefully this year. I just did a talk with Leeds University. If there's any Leeds students, hello there. Um, is it possible to get a record deal after 40? Yeah, it depends on your genre. Not if you're going to do like pop music, of course, like, you know, but if you're going to do other stuff, of course. Best dynamic EQ. I'm in San Diego. Do you sell your st um, time on Skype? Yes, I do Skype conversations. I do Skype mixing sessions. I do Skype production sessions. I do Skype writing session. I do, I helped guys like Jeff McDonald build their studio out. He's absolutely amazing, super talented. Um, so you can do that. You can buy my course if you like by going uh, to producelikeapro.com and sign up, or you can buy the Pro, the Pro Mix Academy course underneath there. You want a beer? Go get a beer. Got to save up for the 1073 from Funky Junk. 1173. Um, oh, the Argave is so beautiful. Um, have I done an original? I am going to be starting to do original mix critiques on plat members. Skype session for a price, please. If you're an Academy member, it's only 150. If you're not an Academy member, it's 250. Um, but trust me, you'll learn a lot and you'll get one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you're in the Algarve. Oh, it's so beautiful. I spent uh, three three different vacations in the Algarve, that holidays there. Can you do video overdubbing in Thai language? Sure. Dollars? Yes, dollars. Um, do I ever work in New York? Yes, but not for a while. I might go to AES this year. Um, I'm going to Summer Nam. Um, am I in Atlanta? Oh, yeah. Freudian slip. Yeah, you're right. Uh... Ever in Atlanta? Yes. I haven't been to Atlanta for a while, but I love Atlanta. Very beautiful. Any thoughts on the Nagra? I don't know that particular Nagra 6. I, know, I used to use Nagra all the time. I'm from India. Thanks for the window videos. Your favorite music producer, mine is Max Martin. My favorite producer is uh, um, hmm. John Leckie. John Leckie by far. Best reverb plugin. Um, I like them all. The stock one I use 90% of the time, I use the Avid one, uh, or I use uh, the Waves ones. But, oh, Valhalla. Oh, the Valhalla. Hats off to Valhalla. Those reverbs are amazing. I do want to do a Warren Hewitt plug-in with Waves. That would be amazing. Fool's Gold is a classic. Exactly. John Leckie is the Benz. He's the first Stone Roses record. 
He was an engineer on Abbey Road, All Things Must Pass. Yeah. Hello, Sweetwater. How are you? Hope you're doing marvelously well. We just did, uh, we just pushed, um, because the IK, these, the iLouds, they were just selling them at Sweetwater, as they still are, but they were selling them at $199. So we, um, we did a we, we did a little uh, Facebook push about it because I use these um, you know for editing. We we like the way they sound. They're good they're good speakers. So when they when they decided to sell them a, a, a hundred dollars off, yes, I have been to Abbey Road. I've worked there. Um, when they sold them at one hundred and ninety nine dollars, I was like, we got to get behind it. So we did. Thank you ever so much. So please check out my classic rock mixing course. I'm going to stay on for another 15 minutes, so we did a two-hour one. Please like and share. See if we can get us over 400 likes. That would be absolutely amazing. Stephen Street on the Smiths. Yeah, I love the Smiths. I love all the Smiths records. Um, um, yeah, the, I think those could be good. I mean, I used to use Nagra's when it was, you know, the tape. Nagra. Because um, I used to do production sound when I first moved to L.A. I do, you know, all the different recording things I do. I do production sound re and recording on movies and, and, and video, not video stuff on, sorry, on commercials and all kinds of stuff. Wow, you got the eye routes. You like them? Yeah. Can you do a shootout with Certified Sounds 801? Smiths are phenomenal. Yeah, I love the Smiths. This, to me, it's like, he came as a breath of fresh air, Johnny Marr, didn't he? The songs were incredible. Morrissey's voice. See you later, Martin. Great to see you. Um, multi band compression. We're starting to really strongly believe in them on vocals. Thank you very much. I produce, pr uh, appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. That's wonderful. Ru Revolver or Rubber Soul? Both. Both. Revolver is the most um, incredible piece of, in Ireland that we just got signed. Britain 7. Remember the Matthews? We got them signed to a really good record deal. Best 1176 plug-in. Waves are really good. Um, I really like the stock one, the Bomb Factory. Don't kill me. I like it. It does a great job. Um, how do you manage to tour? I don't tour anymore. Do you ever do Pure Electronica? Um... Yes. It's been a while, but I do. Sex Pistols of the Clash, both. Both. Love them both. So, very different. Ever mic tablers? Yes, ever mic tablers. Um, depends. If it's just one, then it's one mic. If it's, if it's two, I'll mic them as a stereo pair, using an XY. How, um, do you know much bass frequencies uh, to dial in when recording a bass guitar? Yeah, we talked about it earlier on, but 80, 100, 110, a really great area for bass and something you should pull out slightly in... in in kick drums, then 750, like 850 sometimes, 1K, 1.15K are really good for definition, for woodiness, to make it sound more like a precision. All right, we're almost done. We've got 12 minutes left. Let's do some more questions. Please, those of you left, thank you, AJ. Great to see you. Can you please like and share? Um, should albums be more than 10 songs? Yeah, whatever you want to do. I love albums. Please like and share. See if we can get this over. Of course, I'm a Rush fan. Of course I'm a Rush fan. I remember Spirit of the Radio when it came out. It was amazing. And the B-side in England was Trees. Thoughts on reamping. Love to reamp. We're almost there. Like and share. Let's get this over 400. Liked and shared, dog. Thank you, dog. Like and share. Thank you. J J jazz bass or precision. I actually like a precision recorded by other people, but I use a jazz bass all the time for recording. I love it. Logic X or Pro Tools. Depends what you know. Logic X has amazing virtual instruments built in from the get-go. Pro Tools is a great... Audio editing software, the um, DAW that I love for editing, um, you know, guitar parts and stuff like that. Bagpipes would sound great on a good rhythm. I'm sure they would. Let me know uh, things to go Louton mics. I have the Atlantis. Um, I'm doing it soon. I'm going to be doing the whole Louton mics thing. I just haven't had time to do it. Do you do you know Stillwell plugins? Not well. I'm working on a record with my band. I use Beat Detective, Sync Points, appear in a region. One guitar, keep on working. Besides multi comp and vocal, what other recent turnabouts have you made? Um... I'm not using multi-comp that much. I'm just open to it now. That's what I mean. I'm, uh, you're blocked. How are you blocked? Um, I can see you. Um, the like and share. Thank you very much. Please like and share. Um, do you know Beethoven would have been worse if he could hear all he was doing? Well, he could hear for years. He lost his hearing on the end. Um, you know, he lost his hearing near the end. So he had all that acquired knowledge and ability to hear. Isn't 87 worth the money? Wow, that's a huge question. Wow, that's a huge question. Look, you buy an 87. I go into Sunset Sound and they have 87s they've had there for 40 plus years and they still work. 
and even with dents, they still work. So what, is an 87 worth it? It's worth it if you want something that brings kudos to your studio because it's a Neumann product, and let's not get it wrong, classic microphones were made by Neumann. There's U47s, U48s, and 67s are considered to be the greatest mics ever made. The KM53, 54, and 56s are amazing. So, if you want the cachet and the kudos that a Neumann brings you, then buy an 87. But if you're in the process of trying to buy something to make music, an 87 isn't something you buy just as a great vocal mic. There's many, many great vocal mics out there. But an 87 will give you reliability, will give you build quality, and give you sonics. But you do pay a premium for those things. You pay a premium. I ever worked with David Brent? I don't think so. Um, I don't think I've worked with him. As a drummer, I need multiple channels. I have split Neves and Pre's. They can all be used on one kit. How would you distribute them? Your opinion would be awesome. Um, well, the Neves always have the lows and the low mids, and the, and the APIs are really fast and snappy. I probably would put the Neves on the overheads and the hat or something like that, anything bright, just to soften them a little bit. And then for kicks and snares, APIs, and maybe the toms. Um, but you know what? Try it around, but that's probably what I would do. Honestly, I would probably use all APIs on drums if I could. Um, can you get away with small diaphragm condenser for vocals? Um, yes. Um, you're very welcome. Um, you always say performance first. Yes, it's all about performance. Okay, just give me 10 more likes, and then we got 400. Can we do it? Can we get 10 more likes? I feel like I'm a, I feel like I'm one of those game shows where, no, one of those things where they're like, call up, we're trying to raise money here. Um, call up, uh, we are short of, uh, uh, um, we need to raise a million dollars for charity. That's what I feel like I'm doing. Like and shares. We did it! Yay! You all rock! <coughs> all right. You can't like twice. <laughs> you feel uncertain a bit mixed. Have you ever feel uncertain about a mix that clients like? Yeah, all the time. Sometimes I'll do a mix. Thank you. I'll do a mix and I love it and then they change it so much and I'm like, what are you doing? But I just, I go with it. And then sometimes I'll come back two years later and listen to the mix and be like, they were right. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's an interesting thing. We, we, we need to sort of like remember that we're not, the, it's, we're not the artist. We're the producer, the engineer, and the mixer. It's our job. It's our job to help artists. And so sometimes they do things that don't make any sense to us. But be open to it. Because if you're open to it... Um, Plaparanians, yes. That's the Plap Academy members, the Plaparanians or the Plapanauts. Um, anyway, the um, so thank you all the Academy members are on here. It's awesome to have you all here. If you're not a member of the Academy, you can go and join it. You can go and join it now. You can join it either monthly or yearly. It's great having so many. Uh, is the Abbey Road Institute worth it? I don't know anything about it. My I guess is probably yes. Any fun studio confidential story you'd like to, that you'd like to share? I think I always do. I mean, I talked about Lana Del Rey coming in the studio. I've talked about all kinds of stuff. I remember, I remember we mixed a song out of studio. I'm not going to say what it was, but it was a really, really big, very, very successful, very expensive song. And we came back here and there was a 12K test tone running so quiet in the background going, Wee! were you here when that happened? No. It was a really, really big song. And we didn't notice on the original mix until we stemmed it out and we took the stems and we did a remix using the stems and there was a build-up of that same 12k printed on every single track yep and he had this wheeze but i can't do 12k so you know hans gruber uh why does roy Orbison's record sound so good because he was an incredible talent a great songwriter an amazing guitar player and just an amazing singer um, American, Canadian, or English bacon, all of them. Who doesn't love bacon? Tips on bass, drum, and snare mixing. Um, kick, 40 to 60 is where it should really hit. You can pull out a little tiny bit of 80, a little bit of 100, a little bit of 1K. Why join the Academy? Because every single month you get free multi-tracks, you get mixed critiques, and you get 1,100 people in there who care about you and will help you with your mixing and song stuff. Song arrangements, more important than the sounds you choose to be in a song. Hmm, maybe. Probably a bit of both. The song is the most important thing. How long to your ears get tired? Uh, I mix for about six or eight hours a day maximum. Um, join the Academy, best inventions I've ever made. Thank you. Mark Endo mentioned screen captures. Are you going to share those? Yes, I'll get back on them. We need to, we need to get the screen captures from Mark Endo. Are you on an email chain with him at any point? Uh, 
Uh, Can you ask him? Yeah, we're going to look for him now. Going to join the academy. Great. Look forward to seeing you in there. We've seen a couple of people sign up since we've been doing this, which is amazing. Uh, Barry Rudolph just uh, just reviewed the um, Sonic stuff for us. That's going up. Um, do I think Tune Track changed the game? No. Why would Why would you think that? There's so many people doing that stuff. Academy work with Logic. Yeah, everything. Everybody has everything. There's Cubase in there. Everything. You name it. Um, reverse delay for sense built-in effects. I mean, whatever works. If that works for you, then then use it. Great to see people join the academy. That's absolutely amazing. Um, and great to see those of you that are buying the uh, the the course. I mean, it's a mixing in the box from scratch. You'll see me change my mind as I go. Uh, it's got great reviews. So thank you ever so much. Thoughts on reason? I don't use reason. I used to. I don't know. I don't know what will happen with Cakewalk. Uh, Cubase Reaper Studio One, anything. Thank you, Micah. Love, Re Michael. Love, Reason. Thank you, AJ. Would you consider doing a live mix stream? I, am, I have done that. Um, any tips on mixing Pure Easy Drummer, Addictive Drums tracks? Yes. Um, I did that in a, a Q&A, and I talked about adding delays, slightly out of time delays. 1176 clones. I actually think the warm 1176 clone is amazing value for money. The warm 1176. Highly recommend uh, it's 420 for those that care, not me, but for those that care. We have 420 um, likes now. Thank you ever so much. Who's going to like and share and get it over uh, over the stoner one? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, so anyway, lots to talk about. Um, but yes, delays, out of time delays, bit of distortion. Um, if you watch the saturation one, you'll see, and the delay one, you'll see the tricks I do. So watch the five tips of saturation, five tips of saturation. Five drum tips video. Go watch that on YouTube. You'll see things I did to mess up drums. Um, C2414 is recording stereo tambourine. Oh, crazy. I've never recorded tambourine stereo. Thank you for all your time. Thank you, Aaron. Um, thanks, everybody who's liking and sharing. I'm almost done. Hey, Ricky. Hey, David. Hey, AJ. Would you consider reverb on punk rhythm guitars? Yeah, a little bit to give you some tone. Hello there, Lucky. Hope you're doing marvelously well. This, is a, this has been absolutely fantastic. See you later, Tim. Hello, Jason. Favorite beer? I don't drink. Sorry. When I did drink years and years and years ago, what was my favorite beer? I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. I can't remember. I feel like when I lived in, um, when I lived in Carlisle, there was this really dark stout in there. It was great. Anybody remember? Jay, Jay Sean, I said your name wrong, Jay Sean. How should I say Jay Sean? Jay Sean, it looks like it says Jay Sean Hendrickson. So did I say Jay Sean wrong? Is it different? Is it pronounced differently to the way it's uh, written? Uh, oh, didn't I just say Jay Sean? Uh, don't drink, you're high on life. Was it Guinness? No, it wasn't Guinness, it wasn't Irish. Um, I love, I used to love Guinness. Um, um, does it not sound like I'm saying Sean? J. Sean? Interesting. Newcastle Brown Ale is amazing, yeah. I used to love that. Uh, Bellinger, home of grown-ups. Uh, Merry Down. What? Woe Times, I don't know that. Give us a fist bump. There you go, there's your fist bump. The Dog, me too. Great, I got your fist bump. Um, McQuinn's, I don't remember what it was called. I want to say it began with L. Uh, I want to say it was began with, uh, with that. You know what I mean? I can't really remember. Do, 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 do. Favorite ribbon mics for overheads? Oh, there's a lot of really good ones. I like the Royers. Who doesn't? And I think Sontronics do great stuff for the uh, for the price. But my favorite ribbon mic outside of AEA, which is amazing, AEA. My favorite right ribbon mic, I think, ever around has got to be the Mesonovic. So please, low and brow, no? No, it wasn't low and brow. I can't remember what it was called. I wish there were some of my Carlisle friends on, they're not on, it's late over there. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you ever so much. Please like and share before we go. Please like and share. Um, have a marvelous time. I really appreciate it. If you want to keep asking questions, Please do afterwards. I'll come back and answer some. 
You guys and girls absolutely rock. I really appreciate it. Thank you ever so much for watching. Um, no, you're the man. Cheapest Yamaha Electric I own. I've got a $200 Pacifica. Use it all the time. Going to live stream again. We'll see you next week. For Academy members, we're doing a Wednesday live stream next week. Anybody wants to join the Academy, it's only $17 a month, $169 a year. Um, also, my course is $37. It's underneath here. Check on it. You absolutely rock. Love you all. Thank you for being so much for being an incredibly supportive and in wonderful community. Thank you. Have a marvellous time recording and mixing. Please like and share. Leave more comments underneath. Okay, I'll speak to you later. Have a marvellous time. And we're turning it off.